Okay, think that's uh, think that's me. Thanks again to Dumple for those incredible runs. How's everyone out there doing in RGO land? This is Rock 617 I'm going to continue our fighting game block here. Uh, just so there's no surprises later, we actually do have a couple of bonus runs coming up for you during the fighting game block. Including another game for myself, as well as one more from Lord BBH preceding Kaiser Knuckle. You can check the updated schedule there. This year, I decided to submit Rival Schools as one of my fighting game choices. Truthfully, this is not a super hard fighting game clear. However, it's one that I actually really enjoy as a 1cc. I'm trying to remember how long ago I saw it. It was definitely earlier this year. There was a live run recorded from Gallop and Ghost Arcade near Chicago, Illinois by a YouTube content creator called The Blonde Bunny. And I remember watching the run, and it, it was really, really cool. It utilizes one strat over and over again, but it's a really, really fun strat to pull off, and it's one that I really like and enjoy showing off. For those with a little bit of background this game, this was a Capcom release from the late 90s, right around the same time as the Street Fighter EX series started um, gaining some traction, and they wanted to continue to push the engine. More people are probably familiar with the sequel, Project Justice, and while that is the superior game, I actually think this this game's clear is a little bit more interesting. Those not familiar with the story, essentially what happens is there's a Japanese city that's home to several local schools. A lot of people have been the victims of unknown attacks, kidnappings of students and staff, etc. And basically, what we're doing is we're representing a... The, the, the char cast of characters represents a number of schools who are set out to try to figure out this mystery of, like, who's causing all this. So, I'm going to go ahead and pop my credit in. I'm just gonna turn the volume up a little bit. It sounds pretty low. There we go. Okay, so the character we're gonna play is Gun. That way we can do the Gun Finite. You can essentially put any character as your assist character, but it's better for story purposes to stick it with a character in your school. So that means either Edge or Akira. I'm actually gonna stick with Edge, just, just why not? It makes more sense for a character like Akira to turn on us in the instances where she will. So here's what we're gonna do with Gun. That is the Gonfinite. We're hoping to kill everybody by doing exactly that, and we're not going to be playing the other characters. It's pretty degenerate. It starts off a light button. Very easily confirmable. As you can see from my joystick motions there, how exactly I'm pulling this off. Good first round. So we got a couple characters in sports. Honda Tayo. Of significance, uh, here we have Kyosuke from CV also from CBS2 fame, which is really his, I think, his only foray into 2D fighting. This is also the music track I think of whenever I think of Rival Schools. To finish him off with a super instead. Less work. And then Hinata is actually kind of a hard opponent if I can't land the first light kick. She just presses buttons a lot. There we go. Oops. No, the drop. <laughs> the iframes, I love it. You press the button. So that's actually a little bit important. Every character, since you have two characters, has what's called a double team attack, where you press two buttons at the same strength, so either both lights or both heavies, meaning that it's only a four button game. Oh, quick thing about this fight, it's not necessary to win this fight. It is if you're trying to no miss the game, but even if we met, if we lose against Akira in this one round fight, we won't actually lose the run. Still gonna try to beat her anyway. Oops, big drop. The clap is the hardest thing to land, in my experience. You basically have to do it right after the second punch hits. That's not what I wanted to do at all. I was trying to super. Oh well. Oh well. So shoutouts to Mame emulating rain perfectly. So the same before. Okay, so I was saying about double team moves. 
I'm also gonna maybe be a little bit quiet. This is actually one of the, in my experience, one of the harder fights in the run. Thankfully, Tiffany gave us a big whiff punish opportunity. Ah, mistake off. Wow, she got the whiff punish off the dive kick. She was that plus. That's ah, tardy counters, I guess. I am bad today. Do something stupid. There we go. So anyway, about team up moves. For a double team move, that's actually going to be important to note for later. As you see, the category is secret boss fight, which is something I'm going to be attempting. The big drama there is going to be just actually getting the secret boss fight. Roy is kind of a pain sometimes, too. Definitely have more issues with Tiffany in this fight. Roy can be a jerk. Of course. And he jumped. The move is safe. That all comboed. Did he duck that? Oh, I hit him while ducking. Wasn't sure if I was going to chip that or not. Oh, yeah, I'm dropping everything here. So the no miss is dead. But I gotta try to go for it again. Yeah, they're input reading pretty hard right now. There we go. Okay. You got a really nice counter hit there for some additional damage. So anyway, double team attacks are actually what we're gonna need in order to be able to proceed to the secret boss. You only have to finish off the in-game final boss with one team of attack to be able to make sure that you're gonna fight the secret boss. So the secret is just don't forget. Oops. Ah, yep, that was an input read. Good beats. Nice. Combos. Yeah, it does have some interesting hit confirms. I'll give him that. There we go. One other thing to note, in this game, for every run that I've attempted, I believe every tower is the same depending on what school you're playing. So for this school, the tower is always going to be the same. Super time. Yeah, don't get me wrong, Tartary counters are legit, but eh. <clears throat> Onto Justice High School. This is where we started interfering with some of the staff. Here we have future Project Justice top tiers, Kyoko and Hideo. Missing those. Trying to conserve the meter for now. I think at this point in the story, this is when the staff starts getting brainwashed. Which explains why they're fighting us. Love how even the big grappler can full screen punish something. Super just cuz, even though it's overkill. It just looks cool and he says funny stuff. Alright, on to the final, final battle of the initial run. Kara's been brainwashed yet again. Nice grab. That air block, I don't actually know how that happened though. Dropping that clap all day. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an input read. Nice job. That did a lot of damage too, jeez. Gotta be a little careful here. Yeah, they're not calming down. I also do have to conserve my meter, so if I lose, it's what it is. Alright, let's not drop things again, shall we? Nice cross-up, lord. There we go. 
<sighs> I tend to drop it a lot more when I'm talking. Okay, so here we have the actual dramatic battle against Rizo, Principal of Justice High School. I'm gonna do three reps of the infinite. Actually, I'm gonna just stop there. Because here I wanna make sure I land the double team. And that's all you have to do to get the secret fight. If you land the double team as the KO, then you'll be able to proceed. Otherwise, the game would just end here. Illusory space. Someone's going to be a loser anyway. So now we get to fight Hyo, who has one tie-in in the story that I didn't know of. Not only is he Kyosuke's brother, which I didn't know, but he's also Raizo's nephew. And we get to fight him in this complete fever dream of a stage. Plus, he has a sword. You can't be a proper anime villain if you don't have a sword. The poem. It actually is a Windows screensaver. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. This fight is also unique in that we actually get the choice of partners. We can switch between Edge and Gun. Sorry, Edge and uh, Kira. My bad. He was ducking. Yeah, the, the infinite doesn't work if they're crouching. Go back in. Drop it again, of course. Why not? Uh, he's ducking again. From behind, and it knocks him away. I did not know that. Keep too many rotations there. See if I can. Oh, <laughs> kill him with wake up. That works too. Alright, so that's a clear. Let this ending play out. Unfortunately, I can't own up to this being as quite as crazy as what we just saw in Shang Long Edition, but hey, clear is a clear. Plus, the infinite is just fun to do. I think this is a really good run to introduce to arcade gamers that want to actually look into fighting game one CC, just because like all you have to do is learn the infinite and you can beat the game. It's not only super easy once you get the hang of it, even though you saw me drop it a bunch of times when I get for trying to talk, it's also just really fun to learn. Anyway, I'll bring you to that. Unfortunately, yes, but there will be VODs for it once the event is cleared out. <clears throat> anyway, y'all, thank you so much for the GG's. Super fun run to do. And up next, uh, for the second game, I'm going to be playing some WrestleMania Arcade for the fourth year in a row. <laughs> See y'all shortly.